Yeah, no, I got my Celtics jersey on today. Well, yeah, so why are, they, is, are they? Is there a game are they winning? today? What's happening? <laughs> okay, so for the listener at home, we record one week ahead of time. So at point of recording, the Celtics are up 2-0. So oh, when no. this episode airs, it is entirely possible that the Celtics have won their first NBA championship in, you know, I think 15, 16 years, which would be like, yeah, we won. Sure. It is possible that we're very close to winning our, our yeah. next championship, and there's a game coming up, I think, on Thursday, and well, I'm getting a little yeah. nervous. Or, or is the possibility that, like, you know, the Dallas has pulled ahead in the series and they're up 3-2 right now and I'm panicking. But either way, this is either a, this is a, either a rally jersey today or it is a, a celebration jersey. One of the two. Do we want to play out each scenario real quick? Just give us a quick reaction. Let's say, give us, let's go, let's start from the bottom and let's go up. Let's say Dallas has just pulled ahead. Hey, hey Aaron, Dallas is, is now ahead in the series. I know, man, it's ridiculous. We had it. We were two games up. It is stupid. Our our stars are choking. Jason Tatum isn't the guy. Like, this is really messed up. The whole team's falling apart yeah. around them. I can't believe Prisingas got hurt again. This is ridiculous. Wow. That's wild. I, okay. I also can't believe it. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. Thank you for that. Excellent empathy. contribution from Colin. All Good right. Job. So now let's say the the Celtics are about to win it. They're one game away. It, your dreams could be coming true this week. Go. No one, no one wants to win with a sweep in the championship. That's not fun. That's not exciting. We had to give them right. a game or two. It's fine. But now we're on track. We're all good. The team's clicking. I'm excited uh -huh. for Thursday. We're t we're taking home the championship. Like two days from now, I'm excited. I also can't believe it. Thanks. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Last one. Let's say it's done. It's a done deal. Celtics won. Go ahead. Hey, Aaron, the Celtics oh, yeah, won. Baby. Can you believe it? Yeah, baby. Of course. I mean, I never had a doubt in my mind, man. Like, this is the team. Yeah. The whole, like, Tatum, Brown, White, like, the whole Drew Holiday putting up, like, crazy points. No expect that. Al Horford's, like, 70 years old. And he's, like, yeah. I'm glad that he gets to retire with a ring now. It's KP great. pulled through. You know, we thought his knees were going to fall off. Just the whole team. Team effort. Great job, everyone. Excited. This is just you're going to deal with us for the next five years, baby. Let's go. And I also can't believe it. <laughs> there was a small part of me that was hoping you're going to come right in with like all of this Celtics knowledge and be like, man, we haven't looked this good since whatever. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about the Celtics or I should have prepped all that. So I, yeah, I knew I it wasn't going to happen, but I was hoping that it was going to happen. Welcome to Stop Wasting Your Wine, a wine review podcast where we waste our wine so you don't have to. On this episode, we review a red wine from Washington. Hey everyone, welcome back. Aaron here, joined by two of the most well-read guys I know, Colin and Joel. So great seeing you. I'm excited for this one. How are you doing today? Doing good. I unfortunately haven't read a book in a while because I spend a lot of time editing the podcast but joel is actually reading as we speak man joel, what you got there hold on hold on hold on hold on i just have four more chapters to go hang on one second <laughs> one second <laughs> i'm just glad i had a place a well place prop prop will, joel prop prop yeah. book here <laughs> that's funny the best part about that is we didn't even talk about that joel just had a book ready to go that was incredible really well done sir what the, what the viewer can't see is joel just has an assortment of props on the desk right yeah. below camera level just ready for anything he's the character that you didn't say rubber chicken <laughs> no well, what if i had a rubber chicken oh right here? god if you had a rubber chicken <laughs> i, I would have lost it wouldn't be surprised <laughs> wouldn't be shocked wouldn't even hesitate to continue that conversation yeah what God. is the last book that both of you read? Wow. Well, honestly, for me, it was after we talked to Jim Duane, and uh, he mentioned the book Crush It. And so I, I went out and I got myself a copy of that book, and I've been reading that. Very cool. Very right. cool. Quick synopsis. What's it about? So honestly, pretty interesting for us because it's kind of all about, you know, 
first of all, finding your passion and going after it, right? But then also how we're in a really unprecedented time of just accessibility and so many free tools basically with social media to where if you love something, like you can make something about it and advertise it and build an identity and a brand around it and kind of make it happen. So it's interesting. It's good. Yeah, cool. I think Check the last book I actually like sat down and read all the way through is the Red Rising series. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's really awesome. Phenomenal. Well, the first three are really good. And then, and then the next ones aren't very good, but books one through three red rising absolutely check them out they're fantastic it's like a sci-fi thriller type book oh, cool. in space cool cool nice mm -hmm. i should also mention i recently finished the tom petty biography by warren zanes fantastic read never too far from my reach there as well aaron how about nice. you buddy what's the last book that you read yeah, my wife has been challenged herself to read at least 12 books, this is like a book a month. So she's been crushing it. So I've been trying to catch up. I read this been really uh, crushing cool book it. Called crushing it. Oh, this book called Zone crunch. One that I read recently. That was, it's like a zombie like survival book that I was interesting. I reread The Road uh, by Cormac McCarthy, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. hits very differently when you have kids. If you have kids out oh, there wow. and it, like, just don't read that one did the Dune series over the summer and that got weird. And now I'm like restarting Game <laughs> of Thrones, hoping that if I, you know, reread the five Game of Thrones book by the time I finish them, maybe he'll have finished the next freaking book. It's been 16 years, George. I'm assuming you listen to this podcast. Can you, can you get it done, please? Thanks. Look how literate we are. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little surprised when you first said it, my gut reaction was like, are we really? And then we surprised you. Well, <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised and impressed. So well done, boys. Good for us. Good job. All right. So we talked some sports in the opening. We talked some books now. So now we can God, we calmly and classy, confidently classy talk about classy. wine. We, we are well-rounded individuals. <laughs> we, we are not just like in a bucket. We contain multitudes. Okay. So with that being said, we're drinking a red wine from Washington. Joel, can you tell us a little bit about what we're drinking today? Yes. So we are drinking the Cabernet Sauvignon from Radius Wines. We have the 2021, and this is from Columbia Valley. And this has an ABV of 13.3%, and we picked this up from Total Wine for $19.99. My brain is thrown through a loop seeing that this is like 13.3%, and the Chardonnay we had last week was 14.1%. Just my, wow. my, I'm having trouble reconciling the white being a higher alcohol than the red. And I know that's crazy, but that's where my brain is. Yeah. And uh, Joel, beautiful bottle. I don't know if that was part of your decision, but the radius bottle is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, look at really this thing. It is a phenomenal job. Yeah, Thank nice. you. The wine Thank is you. as yeah. good as the bottle looks. We are in for an absolute treat because that is, that's a beautiful, beautiful bottle. We haven't done a, a label review in some time, but I think this mm. one might warrant that. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, we talked a lot about how a lot of traditional old war wines have like a very simple, like maybe a picture of the estate, lots of words. And like, it's just like, do you know about this? If you do, you'll drink it. We're not trying to sell you on it. And a lot of new world wines like get really flashy and stuff. And this is like, it's not super flashy. It's just. They did a really classy, classy like top to bottom yeah. kind of like it's like the black glass, black, you know, top to it. The, you know, the cover at the very, you know, has the gold R at the very top with that you carve mm -hmm. off to get to the core. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. It's good. It's yeah, a good looking I, bottle. I think it's yeah. simplicity is what makes it so nice. It's really a, a pleasure to look at. So I hope Agreed. the juice inside is as good as the label on the outside. As a bunch of Knights fans, maybe we're just attracted to the black and gold. Like maybe always, that's conscious. true. We all just got the official, the official wine of UCF. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. The label and perhaps the black and gold of it all was a deciding factor, I guess. But it wasn't really why I chose this one. I'll tell you what I did to choose today's wine. I knew I wanted to go back. We we talked about just you know New World wines a lot. We've been hitting California pretty good, but it had been a little while since we went back to Washington. So. Honestly, mm. what I did is I went into the the Total Wine app and I picked Washington and I sorted 
by expert rating and scrolled until I got to the first kind of surprisingly lower priced bottle of wine and picked that one. And this is the one that I found kind of amidst, you know, some, some, you know, hundred dollar bottles of wine was this one kind of hiding in there. So I, that's kind of how I came across it. It does have a 90 point rating as well from, I believe Colin, maybe, you know, these guys, it's like advanced wine or something like that is the, or no, no, no I'm no, sorry. No. Dynamic, dynamic wine, something like that. Ooh, dynamic. Let me, the, nope. let me get the research department on it. Maybe to, to clarify who it is, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of why I chose this one. Beverage dynamics. Beverage dynamics. Beverage dynamics. Well, I've never heard of, but yeah. No, me neither. <laughs> so, All right. but they decided well, this was a 90 point wine. So. Well, let's see how good they are. Mm -hmm. All right. And I mean, we kind of talked about that in the past too, right? You get into the point system. Sometimes you see a name on there that you know, but you know, we've had seen those like 90 point, 91, 92 point stickers from random companies in the past that we've felt a certain way about after we've tried the wine. So it is, I think it's a good starting point. Hopefully we can leave today's review with giving the listener a level of confidence over whether or not that 90 point is deserved. Maybe it's better, maybe not, but I yes. think it's a good, it's a good like place to start looking. And let me clarify, I never choose one based on one of these points, you know, stickers or whatever on there. I just always feel like it's important to mention to the listener for that context, but I make no decisions on what I'm getting, whether in store or online, if I'm looking based on what are these ratings? Yeah. I mean, I think it's like, honestly, I think it's fine if someone starts there, like, you know, it's a good place oh, to yeah. look, especially if you're looking between a bunch of bottles, it's a little bit of a marketing gimmick, but if you can combine it with some of the other knowledge that maybe you've learned on this show, you know, you combine it with mm -hmm. something you're seeing on the label, seeing it maybe more specific, the fact that this has Columbia Valley, right? And not just Washington, like I, maybe that's more of an old world thing, but right, the more specific, right, that you get with where it's being made is helpful. Yeah, it's in combination of all those things might lead you to, to grabbing a wine that you've never had before but with a little mm -hmm. more confidence. Yeah, and that's what I used to do before I got into wine. I would just go to the section I wanted to try, whatever that would be. I'd look for the highest rated wine. You know, it didn't always work out, but because I was so not confident in my wine knowledge that I had to kind of ship that to somebody else. So I used the rating system, which, you know, also now that I know more about wine led me to dislike the rating system as much as I do because if I had had some not great 90 to 95 point wines. So it just doesn't make sense to me at the end, but you know, it's an okay place to start if you're totally lost. Yeah. But now yep. the world has stopped wasting your wine. So we don't need That's to right. rely on these obscure points it. anymore. You just listen to the show, go back in the catalog. We'll help That's you right. find one. That's right. We're going to let you know if this is a kitchen table wine, is this a closet wine? Is this going down the drain? We're going to tell you about it. Numbers schmumbers. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Joel, combination of reasons to pick out this excellent bottle before we get into it, Colin, please make our brains bigger. <laughs> this is the only thing you will learn. Okay. I will try. So tonight we are going to learn about the Columbia Valley AVA. Do either of you guys know what AVA stands for? No. Audio, video, acceptance. <laughs> I don't know what it is so much so that when I was reading the sheet to do the intro of the wine, I skipped that entirely. So please, <laughs> please enlighten us. Yeah, so AVA stands for American Viticulture Area. For some reason, we didn't want to use the term Appalachian which seems so apropos of America, you know, God forbid we use. You already have Appalachians in America. Food. That would have been confusing. People would be hiking around the wine fields and like no one would wine fields, vineyards. We call them wine fields in America. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So we couldn't use the word Appalachian. So we had to come up with our own thing. 
an American viticulture area is what we landed on. And that does sound kind of cool. Uh, yeah. It does sound cool, but viticulture. It's, a, it's unnecessary. It's just Appalachian is fun. But anyway, I digress. It's the largest AVA in the state of Washington and one of the largest in the country. And it actually is not only in Washington, but it bleeds over the border into Oregon. It's, it's such a large region. So you can actually also find uh, Columbia Valley wines from Oregon, which is pretty neat. Uh, you don't always see that. So the climate in Columbia Valley is really perfect for Cabernet Sauvignon. They have pretty significant diurnal swings. Uh, question number two, we're not doing a quiz game here, but are you guys familiar with diurnal swings? I mean, I'm sure as I get older, it's something I'll be more familiar with. And as the doctors uh, talk about my aging body. Zing. <laughs> no, not quite. Again, not even close, actually. Well but Joel, do you have a guess? I was just going to guess something with the weather. Heat yes. cycles? Yes. Yeah. Ooh, what? You kind of. So it's basically, it means it's hot during the day and cool at night. So you have the pretty significant difference in temperature. So the grapes get to ripen during the day because they have that warmth and that heat, but then it also locks in a lot of the acidity at night because there's not as much warmth at night. So the grapes aren't going to get overripe. Um, the Columbia Valley was originally known for its aromatic white grapes, which is interesting because nowadays it's known for Cabernet. Cabernet is absolutely king. They still do make uh, Gewürztraminer and quite a bit of Riesling out there. Riesling is one of the bigger Columbia Valley grapes, which I thought was just a pretty cool fact to see how Cabernet kind of takes over. You know, I think it's a market decision more so than it is anything else. And you see that in a lot of different places. I mean, not only is the climate good, but you know, Cabernet sells and you can sell it for a good price. And this is really cool as far as the vines themselves are concerned. Most of the vines in the Columbia Valley are actually own rooted, which means they're planted on their own rootstock, which is a big deal because most of the world vines are planted on different rootstock, not their own rootstock. And they do that to either prevent a disease or help with drought a lot. You know, they uh, started doing it originally because phylloxera which is a little pest that America brought to the rest of the world. Sorry, guys. Yeah, whoops, was destroying vineyards. So they actually, a lot of European vines are planted on American rootstock, which is a lot less susceptible to phylloxera. So a lot of the vines in the Columbia Valley and greater Washington are grafted on their own rootstock. And they say, you know, I don't know how true this is, but it's said to contribute to a, a greater level of varietal characteristic. So, mm. because it's kind of its own plant as opposed mm. to you know, a taking, Frankenstein's taking, monster that's plant. That's right. Yeah. That's it right. Held up in France. Wasn't the Cabernet Sauvignon what we put up in the 1976 Judgment of yeah. Paris? Yeah, that was uh, from Napa. Uh, yes. Not Washington. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. But, but America. Still, good America. callback to last week. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Very true. Yeah. You don't know what I'm talking about. Go back and listen to last week's episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Great episode, by the way. Great episode. Episode. So I mentioned the, the big diurnal swings, and I want to talk a little bit about what you can expect from Cabernet Sauvignon out of the Columbia Valley. So what you're going to get is big ripe fruit because those hot temperatures during the day do a lot, like I mentioned, allow those grapes to get ripe. And you're going to get some rich blackberry, some cherry, darker fruits usually, a little bit of black currant, which as Ashwin said, nobody's ever had black currant, <laughs> but you see it all over Cabernet Sauvignon. So I guess it's in there. I've never had it. And then it, it, beyond the big bold fruit, you can also find notes of uh, tobacco. And there's actually oftentimes an herbal edge to a lot of these wines. So that'll be interesting to see if we get that in here. And then of course, uh, Cabernet oftentimes sees oak, and that is absolutely true for l wines of Columbia Valley and Washington. In these wines, with most Cabernet Sauvignon, you're usually going to find high tannin, high acid, and the style is going to be pretty bold and big. This one at 13 point, what was it? 13.3, I think. Yeah. It, yeah. It's actually pr pretty light on the alcohol as far as mm -hmm. style is concerned, so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. So yeah, that's a little bit about Columbia Valley and what you can expect from Cabernet from there. Very cool. Well, I am extremely excited. You know, always excited to try something new. You know, we kind of talked about a little bit in the past, like sometimes when we look up the estate, we find lots of information, lots of history, sometimes a little bit hard to find. This is one that as soon as I started uh, reading about like Radius Wines, like they have a lot going on. 
They seem really involved in the area. So I'm excited not only to try this, but, you know, learn more about their state and hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe interact with them a little bit over the course of this week. So that being said, can we play a quick game of Pinot Bruchardinier? Oh, oh, I will sure. start off. Oh, Pinot Bruchardinier, right. Pinot Bruchardinier, America calling their areas within a wine region. <laughs> the Appalachian system. American yeah. viticulture areas rather than just calling them Appalachians. Charnier, we got to do everything different. Charnier. Like, it's fine. We got our own thing over here. And it's not, it's not totally <laughs> random, right? Like, you don't, a, a lot of the countries that we've had, like, kind of had their own little things in there. They usually call them Appalachians. It's just Appalachian in different languages. Oh, I'm saying, I'm saying Chardonnay, let America do America. I'm going to say I, Pinot. I just, just call it an Appalachian. I don't yeah. know why we had to come up with another word. It's Appalachian works. I'm going to agree. Nope. Only because Appalachian is such a cool word and it just has, it sounds like it should be involved with wine and describing where wine comes from. So. Yeah. And maybe there's some history there that I'm just not familiar with yeah. that makes it make more sense, but just on face value, it just, why? Be nope. Great. All right. I'll be the lone, I'll be the lone voice here I'm defending <laughs> America. This one's not wine related, but I've been thinking about this a lot, which Ooh, I don't know why, be. because it's, a, it's not even, it's not cold outside, but maybe because I only drink iced coffee, but iced coffee, Pinot oh. for Chardonnay, Chardonnay, iced coffee in the winter. Oh, in the winter? A big in the Pinot. winter. I have very recently even like started to dabble in iced coffee in the summer because to me, coffee is hot. So in yes. the winter, there's just no question, you know. Yes. I only drink coffee hot, including if we're going on a walk here in sunny Florida in August, I'm still getting hot coffee and I'm going to sweat my face off, but I'm going to do it enjoying coffee the way it should be drank. <laughs> Uh, see, it's a huge Chardonnay for me. If I make coffee at home, it's hot. If I get it out, it's an iced Americano 100% of the time. I don't care how cold it is outside. It's going to be an iced Americano. So I'm that guy who's bundled up with an iced coffee walking around. So for better or for worse, I'm that guy. All right. Pinot per Chardonnay. Cats. The, In general, the movie, play or animal. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, can you send animal. us some cats at the play? <laughs> I can't. I was actually trying to think about okay. the thing. And, uh, Bummer. Memories. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. In general, cats is a pinot for me. I'm terribly allergic to cats. I like cats, it. but I can't be around cats without being absolutely miserable. So I'm going to have to pinope that. I'm going to go Chardon Yope. Here's why I don't I have. I'm so <laughs> you broke the game. Yep. I do what I want. I'm kind of middle ground on cats. I think they're fine. I, you know, I like how they're somewhat self-sufficient. That's pretty rad. But, you know, they, they're there. I, I don't love them. I don't dislike them. Cats are just around. <laughs> I had one cat. I didn't have a cat. My roommate had a cat my freshman year in college that she rescued after Hurricane Francis and named the cat Francis and it would fetch. And that was the coolest cat. Like you just oh, throw balls and grab it. Yeah, it was the coolest cat. It's like the only cat I've ever really liked because it acted like a dog. So in general, cats are a big Pinot for me unless they act like dogs. I just don't want a pet that'll eat you when you die. Like, no, no, thank you. Yeah. That's Wait, uh, that's a fair Can point. We, time out. Time out. What? <laughs> I'm not totally sure what you just said. Cats don't have any loyalty to their owners. Like if you die yeah. and, oh. and you have a bunch of cats, like they just survive off you. Dogs will like lay next to you and be sad. Thinking you're gonna like, you know, wake back up, but cats so, are just I'm like still, food. I'm so I, so. Do cats literally eat you? Because I've not heard of this before. Or is that just a figure of speech? What kind of figure of speech would that be? That's not know. a metaphor or anything. You know like, that old a... turn of phrase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so cats gonna eat you when you die. You know, it's not... I've never heard of cats eating their dead owners. I can't tell if this is a real thing or just something I've heard, but I'm prepared to stand by it. So I'll Google link it back to you. Okay. That being said, we learned some stuff. Let's let's try this wine. Please, cats. Let's move forward. <laughs> Please, cats. Ugh. Tastes like wine. 
All right. Right off the bat, swirl on wow. this thing. And I think we talked about, we all assumed kind of heads up that we should open up this ball a while ago and let it air yep. out a little bit. Colin, kick us off. What are you getting on the nose? Uh, you get a ton of that cassis. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know what flavor that is. That's the the <laughs> black currant. <laughs> Can't even spell that. There, there's no. a word that is on the, like, the first big word. And when you didn't say that right there, my brain kind of... I'll for a second. Go ahead. Oh, but I don't because these for black current might be in there, but I can't smell it. I get a ton of cherry, like dark cherry yeah. is the first thing that I get. And then you definitely get a lot of that oak influence for sure. You, mm -hmm. This wine is obviously been, and then I do actually pick up on a slight herbal quality. I don't know if I could name the herb right now, but it's, there's a little, a little green in there, but not like green pepper, more herbal. Yeah. I mean, it's like. Even beyond like the oaky part, like there's, it's like woody, you know, like it kind of is something of like, you know, like when you're in a wood shop and it's like freshly cut wood or, you know, walking through, I'm trying to think what, what you do, like, do calm, like walking through the aisle in Home Depot. Yeah. yeah. Like there's just like, you know, kind of like that, that sawdust freshly cut wood kind of feeling to it. For sure. And that's that oak influence. Yeah. Honestly, when I was talking about the word and, and like, it is such a cherry bomb. When you didn't say cherry up front, I was like, whoa. For a second, I thought there was something <laughs> else that you were picking up on. And I was so shocked for a second because, wow, cherry. And then the only other things that I'm kind of picking out there, you guys have said it, it's the oaky things. The vanilla will be the only other thing I, I can call out there, the baking yeah, spice sort of sure. situation. But so much of that influence, like the only fruit I'm getting is a cherry. And then a lot of just, you can pick out a couple of little things, I think, from the, the Oak. But I will say, Joel, it's like a different kind of cherry. I, what was the wine we had recently that we were like, it wasn't just like cherry, but it was like medicinal, like super sweet candy cherry yeah. to the face. Yeah. This is this is not that. Like it's Agreed. cherry, but it's not like a medicinal, like children's Tylenol cherry. It's truly like the black cherry. This is mm -hmm. I'm realizing yeah. how important it is to say black cherry versus just cherry because probably cherry sure. alone would align more to that one that we tried before, Aaron, that that you're remembering. And this is like, yeah, yeah. definitely, you know, it's, it's deeper. It's a cherry to the face, but you're right. It's like a, it's a different quality maybe of cherry. So it's not, it's not scary. It was, it was the other Nebbiolo. Big. That was the one that we were like, that was, was like yeah. cherry bomb, yeah. very medicinal, very sweet. And this is, yeah. I mean, maybe it's because the bottle is like themed like black black label black glass black stickers but it's like darker it's like everything mm -hmm. just has like a darker aspect to it i'm getting some plum in there too i think that's another fruit i could pick out but mostly cherry with a little bit of plum i think those are the two big ones cool so plary plary i just push them together why say plum and cherry <laughs> when you can just skip it i'm in and say plary I think that's great. <laughs> I'm all about efficiency in my language. So an oak, uh, a little bit of vanilla. Let's taste it out. See what we get. Ooh. Joel. Okay, definitely everything we just said. I'm surprised by how much more balanced the flavor is. Still, obviously, you know, cherry, but definitely picking up a lot more of that plum that you were talking about. And I don't know if it's just because my daughter's crazy about these right now. So I'm eating a lot of them at the moment. But anybody getting like a little blackberry in there too? Yeah. I don't dislike that at all. I'm going to assume, yes, I've never had a blackberry in my life. Especially on the, <laughs> the when I kind of inhale at the end of the sip, I'm getting that. Yeah. No, totally. No, that's a great call for sure. And I think the one thing that sticks out to me is even beyond the flavors, the tannin. Because yeah. it is bold, but it's very nice. <laughs> it's big, but it's also subtle. You know, it's not itchy or scratchy. Yeah. It hugs yep. the gums, but it, it just kind of hugs them. It's not aggressive in any way, which is really nice from tannin that big because there's a lot. Like, don't get me wrong. There's a ton of tannin in here. You can really feel it, but it's an enjoyable tannic experience. Yeah, you got, you stole mine, you, you jerk. You you know oh. so much. You know, it was the Sorry. one thing I got. But no, I, I, I noticed that too. It's like you get that, that grippiness that you often get in big reds. It doesn't go away immediately, but it like backs off. It's like a nice big hug. And then like releases you and then maybe like just puts a hand on your shoulder. You know, it's just like, it doesn't like hang nice out. Image. It's so, yeah, you know, just, it's, it's very comforting. Thank you, wine. Anybody else a little shocked at how light 
it is. And not that it's a light wine, but when I smelled it, I thought it was going to be overwhelmingly cherry and I thought it was going to be a little heavier, but it's really very, very approachable and very kind of light's not the word, but like me very medium body. Yeah, it's, it's not thin. That. Yeah. It's not like thin by any means. Like we've had some thin, surprisingly thin reds. Mm -hmm. and we're like, Oh God, mm -hmm. where did the whole thing go? It's not that, but yeah. you're right. Like it's not as full and like viscous is the right word, but like, it's not as heavy as you think it was going to be. Yeah. I think approachable is 100% the right word because this is not, you know, your Napa Valley Cabernet, which is going to like absolutely punch you in the face. And I think part of that too is the alcohol at 13.3%. You're not getting mm -hmm. that big, like Aaron mentioned, yeah. that big body punch. It's not, it's not huge for sure. You know, it's probably medium plus body, but it's not like super heavy or anything like that. So I would totally agree with that. Where are you with the acidity? That's, mm -hmm. Let me take a sip. I'll get back to you. Medium plus to high. It really, if you just let the, the saliva flow, you pay attention to how much saliva it creates. There's quite a bit of acidity there. But it's nice because it works really well with the tannin. Well, sure. and that's what I was going to call out. I think it's the mix of it being a little bit lower alcohol content and then pretty more acidic than I was expecting that I think maybe is, is lending it, you know, part of why it is so approachable. No, but this is like, this is, this is working out really well. Like I want to make a steak right now. Totally. Like I want to go because this is so, it has such nice flavors mm -hmm. and the simultaneously kind of has like the medium high level of the things that I like. It's a little bit grippy. It's, it's, it's a little high acidity, but nothing is going to like blast away the flavor of the food that I'm eating. It's like a, just a really good pairing. I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, shoot, this would be just a really good pairing bottle. Thinking about my like BYOB places in Jersey. I don't know if you guys have those in, in Orlando, but we do most not. restaurants uh, in Jersey, you yeah. can bring your own booze with you. Like mm. this would be a great bottle to grab, to bring with you to a steak dinner to have along with that meal. Yeah, no, very well structurally balanced. I agree. Great food wine. This would be awesome with a steak. I do wish there was a little bit more fruit and a little bit less oak. I think that's when it comes to the flavor profile. This is definitely, like we mentioned, a bottle you want to let it decant if you can, because it really it, it, yeah. it kind of brought everything into balance. But at first, it was a lot of oak and just a little bit of fruit. So that's my one gripe. I just wish the, the fruit was a little more. It's your grape, um, it's your grape gripe. My grape grape for sure. Oh, uh, that, that'd be a good segment. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> the grape. Um, that's what we should call your rant from now on. Welcome to yeah. the grape grape. But you're really getting to the nitty gritty of it all, right? Like this is like you're like kind of adjusting to like if I was going to make this really what I like. Like that's the adjustment you would make. You would reduce the oak and, and like up the fruit. But from just a quality like an enjoyment standpoint, though, like it's a really well balanced wine. No, the wine itself is very good quality, no doubt. Can I make one more point too, just on the, um, you, you're talking about the fruit, you know, you want in there to be a little bit of fruit or more fruit, but what I'm appreciating about this too, and I guess I'm just, it, it's aligning with my flavor profile a little bit, which is that the fruit that is in there, I think is very, it's like a younger, fresher fruit. It's not mm -hmm. the... I feel like sometimes in the Cabernet world, and maybe it's a different style, but you get kind of like sucked into the the very ripe strawberry and all of this in there. And it's kind of, we've talked about like the strawberries you forget about and then you pull out and they're like super mm. sweet, sugary. This is not that. And I like that in this Cabernet. I agree. Yeah. It's more like ripe cherry fruit juice, but that's not a very good, like if you were to take a fresh piece of fruit and juice it, that's what you're getting like no yeah. sugar added don't think like juice you would buy at the grocery store but it the fruit is very fresh in that mm. respect so I mean, the word agree. ripe keeps coming up and it's just like what all the all the fruit that you imagine are in this the ripe version of that fruit and and blend those flavors together but like just ripe yep. not like over ripe at all. <laughs> for sure just no, ripe. nicely ripe i was going to make that same point because a lot of times ripe mm -hmm. comes with you think it's going to be too too much but this is mm -hmm. this is not all right. So, I mean, it sounds like a great moment to transition into our final thoughts. 
you know, we've talked a lot about what this wine smells like, what it tastes like, but mm-hmm. do we like it? Yeah, but do they like it? It's time for the review. All right, guys, man, $19.99 for a Cabernet Savion Reserve from Radius Wines 2021. Joel, this was your pick, so I'll let you give the last thoughts on it. Colin, how are you feeling about this wine? Yeah, this is a pretty easy kitchen table wine for me. It's super tasty, really well balanced. Like Aaron said, I'd love to have this with a steak. There's really not too much wrong with it, to be honest. It's just good, tasty Cabernet Sauvignon from Columbia Valley. So, you know, I like I mentioned, maybe a little bit more fruit, but that's not enough to knock it off the kitchen table into the closet. So... Definitely on the kitchen table for me. Yeah, same here. Strong kitchen table wine. It's a restaurant table wine. If I'm going to pull a Joel and start making up new things, like this is like if if, if again, we're making up the are, rules here, you can do whatever you want. We're just making them up as you go. Like if you're in an area that has the the culture of you bring your own wine bottle to restaurants or you have a, a low corking fee, this is a good bottle to grab to accompany with a meal. It is tasty. It is not a super high alcohol comparative to other like big, bold reds. It's very well balanced. If folks like drinking reds with their meal, there aren't going to be like a lot of folks at the table who are like, oh God, I got it. This is too much for me. Or this is too heavy. This is too full. Like this just feels like a very, to me, a very enjoyable red wine that would pair very well with a, a solid meal, especially like a steak meal or some kind of meat. So kitchen table wine for sure. Joel, how are you feeling about your pick? I have a question before I give my official review. You might have alluded to this a little bit, Colin, but is this a typical you know, Columbia Valley AV style <laughs> here? Have we discovered now that there's the Napa style, which is probably the a little bit more dependent on the oakiness to the face and maybe the, the more ripe fruits, and this is the... Washington slash Columbia Valley version. Is that fair or no? Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I personally haven't had too much Cabernet Sauvignon from Columbia Valley, so I don't have a library of wines to compare this to as far as like typicity is concerned. But, you know, just based on what we talked about earlier, I mean, this is kind of, you know, I you could have taken my description I read in the learning segment and laid it on top yeah. of this wine. And it's mm-hmm. pretty much that. So, yeah, I would say this is pretty much what you're going to be looking at from the Columbia Valley. And I ask is because I feel like I sometimes try to avoid Cabernet Sauvignon when I'm out because I don't typically love the, you know, kind of that Napa, at least what we're calling on, on this, that Napa style of of the big, you know, big, fr- big ripe fruit and the big oak. I'm loving this Cabernet Sauvignon. And I think maybe more than you guys are. How it's, much it's, more? How much yeah, more, not, Joel? Not, I don't think wine fridge more, but. Ah, how much uh, more would you love it then? I love it enough to say that it's my favorite Cabernet Sauvignon that I've ever had. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. And it's not the wine fridge. Damn. Come on. <sighs> Well, then I'm thinking Gosh. about what's in my wine fridge and what I would take mm. out. Let me review my wine fridge. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna pull. I'm pulling up your wine fridge right now, Joel. You have the Cote d'Aron, which is a hard one. Yeah, the Baronia Rioja and the Taba. So good, sitting in your wine fridge. Okay, I don't think I can remove one of those to put this in there, but I did play with the idea for a second because I think it's partly because it's really good in my opinion, and partly because it was so unexpected <laughs> that I enjoyed this this much. So. I'm going to officially say it is in a place of honor on the kitchen table. I'm excited to share this with friends when they come over. Like you guys were saying, I mean, this is a really, we said it's approachable, but I think it's also very adaptable. I mean, you could sit and enjoy this on its own. You could drink this with a nice steak like you were talking about, Aaron. Mm. So yeah, yeah, probably on the kitchen table, really enjoy it. And again, like I want to go back. I want to try some more Columbia Valley Cabernet Sauvignon now and see if this is, you know, just like my Cab Sauvignon region now. <laughs> yeah, and I think the one word you can associate with this wine, and that's often associated with Washington, is value. At nineteen ninety nine, yeah. just a killer value. It, 
drinks yep. way above its price point. And you see a lot of that out of Washington because it doesn't necessarily have the cachet that Napa does. I'm going to Washington. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you're looking for solid value, Washington is the place and this bottle is part of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you heard of your folks, obviously not a waste of your wine by any means. Great value. 20 bucks for a really solid bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. You can pick this up at, I would imagine, most of your large wine distributors, but definitely in Total Wine. Check it out. It, it's a good one. Absolutely. So great episode, great wine. We learned a lot today. We found just, I always get excited when we find a bottle like this, because this is going to be a bottle that goes into my like repertoire of when I go to the mm -hmm. store and I'm going to pick up a couple of bottles to like refill my fridge or refill my pantry. This is going to go into that repertoire because it's 20 bucks and so accessible. Radius Wines, Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve. Check it out. And if you want to check us out more, Colin, where can people find us? Great question. So I would first check Instagram. That's the number one place you want to go check us out at Stop Wasting Your Wine. Yep, popping. We're on YouTube, also at Stop Wasting Your Wine. And you can check us out at our unupdated website, stopwastingyourwine.com. <laughs> Boom. Get them, burn. It's true. Continue. <laughs> and those are really His the birthday. Three, so, yeah, that's fair. This weekend. I have no excuse. But yes, that, oh, Father's Day. Going to leverage that one. <laughs> Go on. For those of you not in the know, Joel's supposed to be updating the website. We all uh, wait. We all what? have very particular skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But check out all the other places. Yeah. Instagram. Great. And YouTube. YouTube's been awesome. YouTube More has people watch on YouTube. It's really cool. You get to see our faces. Sorry about that ahead of time, but a lot of fun. Who wouldn't want to look at this mug? Absolutely. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Another good one. <laughs> so excited. Can't wait till next week. Go Celtics. Thanks for listening. Bye, y'all. Remember, stop wasting your wine. Bye. <laughs>